Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. Uh, there's the monthly chart. There we are here. We're just a, a ways away from this level here, but you'll notice that at 66, we could fall to 64 before we actually find uh, some support. And since there's no nothing really, no basing or anything to stop us from dropping on this particular chart, this one here is probably not going to be the best candidate for some kind of a range trading strategy. In other words, this one could continue lower until it reaches its, its area of major support down here. So with that in mind, um, you'll notice here, um, ever since it topped out back in March, it's had a few counter trend rallies to where we've just gone sideways, dropped and went sideways up. And then we actually had some kind of a, a bear flag actually form here. And then we extended the lows. We bounced on these pivot lows, these prior support areas, but that's all they were, were shallow, uh, were shallow bounces. And if we wanted to, on this particular chart, here's that solid support level down here. So we could continue to sell off and make new lows. So I wrote on here, new trading ranges form when there are two similar highs and two similar, similar lows. So last week's candle has a low. We'll see where this week's candle closes. Um, but right now, this is not really the best candidate for uh, trading ranges. Even on the daily charts, uh, I made my notes as uh, time was going on. The United Nations downgraded the buck. Um, on 10.6, the Saudis are rumored to be looking at pricing oil using a basket of currencies. Okay, And again, I notice here there's no real solid support till I get way down here on this chart. So I have a little trading range going here, and I extended the low on 10.17, the week of 10.17. So I'm just watching this chart at this point to see if it'll turn into a trading range situation. But as long as the trend continues here, um, I'm just looking for better opportunities. And notice on this particular daily chart, I have several areas of resistance between 70 and 72. These are like layers of resistance to where if there are any kind of counter trend rallies, we could bounce off of here and then maybe extend up and bounce off the next one and maybe extend up and then bounce off the next one. In other words, we could, if there is a, a solid dollar rally, we're not going to go right straight back up to the top of the chart unless, of course, there's another kind of uh, um event and god forbid we see any more events after that i i don't know if i could take them <laughs> so anyway so we're not really hot on trading this one here steve and um and everybody here we're not really looking for a trading range situation yet but if it does start to base for a few days go sideways and break a downtrend line to indicate that there are some buyers down here well then we could look at the situation and revisit it for demonstration purposes, though, um, I did put on a little sample trade because the dollar index, obviously, it, with uh, the euro being 52% of it, it's not going to rally very far without the euro going along. Okay, so I made my notes here that um, if the dollar rallies, a new area of support could form above that higher, that 64.50 area, the lower area, and if that happens, then we'll just readjust our strategy and then we will go into a um, trading range situation. So to demonstrate to the class, what I did was just a basic call purchase strategy. I actually bought a 66.50 January call, and um, that's it. I mean, that I explained to everybody this is all you could lose, You're, and you don't have to lose this much. You can always close the position if it drops to where you lost more than 50% here. Um, the original stop loss was going to be below the 66 gap, and then our first target was going to be 69. Now, Maybe not to take the position off because I've got a lot of time. But if I go sideways for a few days on the daily chart and then I rally further, well, then I'll have some higher support that will be like protection for me, so I'll, I'll raise my initial stop loss. Okay. So that's what a swing trader would do. A swing trader would look for support areas during a, a, a sell-off and they could buy call options to participate in some kind of a counter trend short covering rally with limited risk, okay? And um, just a plain call strategy. So I listed all the things here for my students so that they would understand the basics of how, what a call is, okay? I'll try to buy calls that are at or in the money for a higher probability of success, how to calculate your break even points, 
right? And, of course, these are all the, uh, the Greeks and how they're going to affect your position. I actually borrowed one of your little buy a call uh, from your new website. I thought that was a very, very interesting little uh, – you, you've done so much work with this new website. I don't know if you've rolled it out to the public yet, but it's really looking good. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Yep. yep. It's, uh, it's a work in progress. Thank you. All right. So this is our British pound, dollar versus the pound. And uh, notice, same thing here. We had a little uh, range where we broke out into a big – uptrend against the pound and then we had a big range up here and we topped out and we've been dropping now notice this is a trading range situation that's not very near the lows it's sort of near the highs so we could break out in either direction here and so we're making a plan that we're while we're in a trading range uh, for some kind of a trading range strategy well what happened here is a couple of fundamental things happen um, we actually made new lows to around 60, and then we had this nice little rally here. So now we have a support area below current price. And then the Bank of England hinted last week that they may relax the quantitative easing program, and all of a sudden the dollar sold off very fast. So right away, this now becomes a weekly resistance area for us, and this is really important. So for trading range strategies, I'm I'm a buyer of at 63. I'm a seller at 6. I'm 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 sorry. I'm a buyer at 60, and I'm a seller at 63. And so right there, I have my potential trading range. And as long as price stays in between here, and goes back and forth like this, I can trade some kind of a trading range strategy with a brand new support level, demand level, and a brand new supply level or resistance level, above and below current price. So this is a uh, currency in the pair that's much better for some kind of a range trading strategy. And on 10.22, or actually 10.21, that's last week's candle, uh, we pushed into the support area on the weekly candle. Now, uh, for demonstration purposes for the class, I actually initiated a position. We'll see what it is on the next slide. But, you know, we don't even have to wait for this option to drop in half in value. If it breaks below here or here, okay, then it's got a long ways to drop before it finds any kind of a place where we had a base and a big rally in the past. So what's the sense of hanging on to that position? It's, it's probably going to go against me. And, of course, this area above me will become new resistance. So this is how you can plan to just exit that trade, take your loss, and wait for the next opportunity. Okay? They're not all going to be winners. They can't. Okay, so here we purchased a, a January 210 6050 call for 160. So the cost was very, very low to participate in the potential counter trend rally. Because right now, uh, from this previous slide, once the market tops and drops like this, uh, these usually become opportunities for position traders to short rallies. And for swing traders, you can, of course, trade these channels as, as they form for as long as they're on your chart. Okay. And I don't know if I told you this before in one of my other webinars, but the British pound went flat, I think, from 1980, what was it, 78 to like 88 or 10, 12 years between 140 and 160. So they can go range bound for a long time. Well, the economy in Great Britain is still in a recession per week GDP data released on 1023. So on Friday, the Bank, uh, Bank of England came out and said that uh, no growth in the gross domestic product. The recession is still very much in. And the dollar had a, one of its better days against the British pound on Friday. So at this point in time, you know, this call position is already in the money. It's already doing fine. And um, now we'll talk about spreads. And, of course, I could have done a bull call and bought the, bought the 60, sold the 63 because I knew where my resistance was. But what I like to do, as I, I always say to my students, I like to leg into my spreads. When I get closer to this resistance, of course, um, my puts are going to be um, a lot cheaper. My uh, calls are going to be a lot cheaper. If I want to sell any calls above here, uh, above this resistance area, they're going to be more expensive for anything that I do right. So there's all kinds of strategies that I could do. But since I was showing the class just the, the most basic strategies of all, uh, that's where we are now. Thank you for listening to our podcast.